Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Madden Cheese, as always. Got another gameplay video for you today. Today, I'm going to be going over something that's been a uh, concern in the Madden community, and that's been a topic in many videos that I've made over the years, and that's DDA. I don't want to make a huge thing about it. In the years past, I've actually made, like, full extensive videos on, you know, things like EA owns a patent when it comes to DDA, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that as it's relevant throughout this game. Uh, but ultimately, this is a video that something really weird happened, and I, I'll leave it up to you you guys to decide uh, if you think that it was legit or not because I know a lot of people experience things like this we typically just call it mad BS and sweep it under the rug a lot of times but make no mistake about it EA does own a uh, a patent on DDA which stands for dynamic difficulty adjustment uh, where essentially uh, they've been accused of and then, like I said this is based off of their own patent this is not based off of somebody just coming up with a wild uh, idea uh, they basically have been accused of uh, basically rigging games so that you're um, you lose based off of the the idea that they think that losing games sometimes uh, makes the game more engaging is how they call it and I broke this down in an entire video I'm not going to break it down today it was it was an older video I broke this down a long time ago I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check that out if you're not familiar with DDA uh, but ultimately we're going to start this off just like a regular gameplay because DDA is not something you're going to notice throughout the entire game it's just going to crop up at times uh, typically in critical situations and I will point that out as the video goes on so ultimately on on the defensive side, my opponent's having a lot of success when it comes to uh, the man coverage that I'm running. As you can see right there, I mean, running against the man coverage with the quarterback, there's no, you know, there's nobody in the middle of the field there. He's able to pick up a big run with Tom Brady of all players. Uh, he gets a lot of successful runs with Derrick Henry early on, uh, who's a really good card. Uh, but ultimately, this is not. Uh, this gameplay is typically in draft champions. I typically play a lot of draft champions, so you're not going to see, um, you know, in draft champions, there's no uh, real X factors to come and in, in, to play. So when things happen, you can't say, well, that was probably the X Factor because there is no X Factor. So just remember that. So fourth and eight, my opponent's going to go for it. And finally, all the zones that I've been using in combination with the man's work out. Nope. And there's nothing open on fourth and eight. So probably wasn't the best idea to go for it. On the offensive side, I'm be using this play a lot. I'm using the Packers playbook. That's who I picked. Starting off on this play, it looks like he's in a man coverage. So I use a little bit of a man adjustment, putting this X around the Zigs. Zigs are very consistent man beaters when it comes to man plays. But it looks like he shifts it out of it into a cover two. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it right back. Go to the cover two variation. I don't have to do any adjustments. It's a really good cover two play. Motion this guy out for a little bit of a speed boost. And the second he gets past that cornerback, that's all I'm really watching for. Uh, you typically have a really big play as we get, uh, you know, we just basically flip the field all in one play. So we're going to hit him with a run play out of this formation too because you really have to show, you know, multiple looks so they don't just expect that you're in the pass going for the pass play over and over. So on the next play, I don't set it up for the cover three variation because I really thought he was running a cover two. And if it was, if I would have, I would have had a, a probably an easy touchdown up the seam. Uh, then I basically had to check it down to, uh, to Bo Jackson again. So hitting him with some runs just to keep him honest. Uh, and now I'm in a situation where I'm really in a, a third and six. Very next play, I mean, this is a cover two man all the way. So I make my cover two man adjustment, which is that zig once again, very consistent. And right before the play is hiked, he, he shifts back in what looks like a cover two. So sure enough, only three seconds left. I'm screwed. I got to just go for it. And my pre-snap read is just done. Uh, and the whole play just gets messed over because he switched his, his you know defense up last second. And I think I was just frustrated and not paying attention because I just go right into the kick meter uh, before I even realized that I did not adjust where the kick was going. So that's on me. Totally not paying attention. So those three points are on me because I wasn't paying attention. I take 100% blame on that. So on defense, like I said, he does a very good job, especially in the first half of just uh, you know hitting me with a lot of man beaters. Uh, this one here, I mean, I follow a little bit too far. Uh, and give up a big play uh, behind me. Ultimately, I mean, I don't think I was really using it on point on a lot of these defensive series. Uh, this guy right here, I mean, he feels so slow. I know Derrick Henry is a great back, but I don't think he's that much faster. So a lot of times it feels like the, the linebackers are just running in mud. Something that I notice in this game is typically inside the red zone is where things really are noticeable. Like right here on the very next play, he hits me with a slant and tight man coverage, and he makes the grab. Remember that because when I have the ball, you're going to see a very different look. On the next play, you get a ridiculous animation where where ultimately Derrick Henry just runs through my 300-pound Fletcher Cox like he's not even there. 
triggering a totally BS animation. On the next play, he gets shut down by, you know, a, an average linebacker. So why would he run through Fletcher Cox if he's not even there, but then on a two-point conversion get tackled? I mean, that's what I'm talking about, the lack of consistency. Like I said, remember that slant from earlier? I don't get that look. Very next play, I run the exact same thing. Tight man coverage, <laughs> balls out. Um, you know, it is what it is. So there's definitely, like I said, you're going to see a lack of consistency between we're doing the same things, but I'm not getting those same looks. So second and 10, I'm going to go with a playmaker, uh, turn this guy up field, get a really big play uh, that was something that kind of made on the fly it wasn't really a money play and it worked out really well then on the next play i mean he exposed this cover three pre-snap and i just hit him right at the seam for a touchdown so we're going we're going to go ahead we're going to take the lead we're not going to go for two because he misses two so up seven six uh on the defensive side we're going right back to these man coverages for the most part um i get caught up on a block really prematurely there i try to knife through the block because i read that he was running a, a screen but I got just got stuck. I got suctioned into something, and that's all there she wrote. Uh, on the next, on the defensive play, he's having, like I said, having a lot of success against my man coverages, uh, which isn't typically the case. I mean, the man coverage usually covers a lot tighter than this. Then on the next play, I just kind of get, like, suctioned in. I don't know what happened. He must have hiked the ball when I was trying to set up a play. And then I just get, like, sucked into an animation, and it basically just, you know, the play was over before it even started. So 21 seconds left in the very next play. He's just going to hit me right up the cover three seam uh, and score. So he's going to go for two again, only this time he's going to do it out of an empty backfield. And while I'm trying to set up the play, once again, I get stuck on the defensive end that's rushing. So I drop him back, and only one guy is trying to go after the quarterback. So after all that, we come away with a pick. I mean, I tried to come out of the end zone hoping to get two out of it, but it doesn't work out. So 17 seconds left on the clock. Um, I can still make something happen. I'm going right back to the same play that I've been using pretty successfully throughout the game. Uh, and he's hit me with a cover too, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around and take off once again. Uh, he's in what looks like either a cover three or a man coverage. Oh. The man coverage works out pretty well. He uses the B route, uh, which is typically the home run route anyway, and uh, he gives me enough separation to really get a really big play and go down and kick a field goal. Now, if I would have hit that first field goal i'd be up by a point right now so second half i got ball i typically only hit this slant on a man coverage and that's exactly what i see you can see right there he gets wide open uh because he's pretty much running man throughout the entire game uh the same way that i am uh then we're going to hit him with another rpo this time we're just going to hand it off like i said the RP rpos are some of the more successful plays in the game it's one of the more consistent plays in the game so we hit him with a run one more time uh like i said i'm just i'm only down a you know a field goal so i'm not really playing with any uh urgency at all really just hitting with a lot of run plays third and five we switch over to an inside zone i don't quite get it uh so fourth and one we're going to go for it and and I, I ultimately, I see what looks like a pretty obvious man coverage. So the B route here, going to put him in a zig one more time. Like I said, that's one of the most consistent man-beating routes in the game. You'll typically get that, and that's exactly what I get here. We get a wide-open look, and we're off to the races. We can get inside the five, and then we get one of the wackest, weakest animations I've seen in a minute. What the hell was that? As we fumble going into the end zone at about the one yard line. Now, I know that, you know, he hit the user uh, strip animation, but that doesn't mean that you get it. It triggers the animation. Whether that's a positive or negative, this game is all about triggering animations. It triggered a BS animation, and I, in my opinion, I got robbed on that particular play. But it's just one play. I'm not going to make an entire case or an entire video off of one play. But that was really the point where I really started to feel like I was getting cheesed. So next play, he basically throws it right up. Gotcha, bitch. I get a user interception. I'm coming back the other way. Uh, by the time I get tackled as I outrun most of his linemen, I'm pretty much back to right where I was. And on the very next play, I'm going to do the exact same thing. He's in another man coverage, and I'm going to put my B route in the zig one more time. I'm pointing these things out because I want to show you consistency or either that or a lack of. As you can see, the B route beats the play, even though they give me a whack throwing animation based off of the fact that they said I was in, I was in pressure. But I just want you to remember that. The zig routes beat man coverage pretty much every time because you're going to see a completely different result later in the game. So we get a really big play on third down as he's running a cover two. Then we're going to go. We see a man coverage one more time. We're going to hit that slant, which typically destroys man. What? Sure enough, it gets shut down for some unknown reason. Like I said, lack of consistency, which makes me wonder. Then on the next play, he gets an edge blitz right off the side. An unblocked man comes in and sacks me. Uh, third and goal, though, we're going to go ahead. We're going to turn up, and we're going to go for it on the ground. We're going to try to run it in here. Now, I know typically when you run with quarterbacks, I, you, you have a high chance of fumbling. But I swear to you, my thought process was they're not going to screw me twice on the one-yard line. And sure enough, they do as Patrick Mahomes fumbles again on the one-yard line. <laughs> Oh, come on! So sure enough, we fumbled twice on the one within a couple of minutes. 
Then to make things worse, they guarantee that I'm not going to get the ball back. Watch the animations that my linemen give me when it comes to a loose ball compared to his animations of his defensive players. They're all jumping all over the ball. My offensive players, on the other hand, run away, run away. They're all dumb out. Three of the linemen, for whatever reason, run past the ball all the way. I mean, I don't know where they're going. They look like they're headed to the locker room. Can I ask you a question? You got a moment? Which team do you play for? So, you know, what's going on there? Where's my opportunity to possibly get the ball back? Next play on defense, he hits me with a simple slant once again against man coverage, and he beats man coverage with slants once again. I showed you several times throughout this game where my slants got completely shut down against man coverage. For what reason, I don't know. Slants typically beat man. It's been working for him all game. It has not been working for me all game. You explain that. You know what I mean? It's the same, it's the same route we're using. We're both using the same defense. Why would it only work for one of us? That's something that I have to bring into question, which, like I said, which is why I kind of feel like uh, the game's pretty much slanted in my opponent's favor for whatever reason so on the defensive side third and four um he you know once again like that right there you could easily made a case that that ball gets knocked out it was an instant boom boom he catches it uh my defender could have knocked it out but you know we're beyond that so we know his his receivers have sticky hands mine do not and now he starts getting animations where the running back is carrying defenders and falling forward several yards this one here worked out in my favor because he goes out of bounds on the next play he gets that animation again this time he's basically met right the line of scrimmage and he falls forward bulldozing over Fletcher Cobb one more time for about five yards so it's something where he get, he's getting that consistent look that i sure isn't i'm not getting with bo jackson who's also a powerhouse then on third nine gotcha, throws it for some reason trying to end the game i do get an interception i get the ball back so i still have an opportunity although it's not a very good one because i don't have any timeouts so on the very next play uh you know we're going to hit him with the exact same play he's got the man coverages out he doesn't cover the running back so we get that to the sideline uh which works out then on the next play we're going right back to those zigs which you've seen consistently consistently roast man coverage he's in man coverage look how tight the coverage is now it's so tight that it's like he basically you can't even see the defender that's how tight the coverage is oh come on every other time that i ran a zig route against this man coverage it completely burnt it to the point where i, I should have scored every time i ran it and that's it's it's a it's a zig it beats man coverage why is it getting shut down now why is the coverage so tight it looks like he like the defensive player ran the route so like I said, I don't want to flat out call it DDA, but where's the consistency? Why is it now with the game on the line? I'm going to go, but I'm going to go with that zig one more time. This time, it's like I just don't even feel comfortable because he's tight enough. He probably would have picked six that. You know what I mean? Like it's not at all the same it was early in the game. And that's pretty much it. I get sacked. The game's over. I'm not really mad about the loss. I just, like I said, I was noticing these things while I was playing. And it really changes how you play. I mean, I could have... You know, when I fumbled with the quarterback, I could have just went down. Uh, I could have slid. I could have just kicked the field goal, took the lead. But the thing is, when you feel like you're getting BS'd, it changes you how you play mentally. You feel like you have to do more because you feel like you have to beat the game and your opponent. Unlike normal, you just have to beat your opponent. It's like playing against bad refereeing. You know what I mean? It's like you feel like you have to beat them as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section if you think that was legit or not. Uh, give me your own stories because typically when I make this video, everybody lets me know about their own horror stories. And that's it. That's the video so thanks for watching that money shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below